I was not happy with it. Uh, I disagree with it. Uh, but again, I didn't say I didn't say that they did, but I disagree with it. All right. Joining me now, my panel, Scott Blakeman and Ken Delvecchio. Scott uh, is a Democratic political commentator and Ken always swinging from the right side. All right, Scott, I'm going to start off with you because I imagine you have a lot of criticism for the president. Yes, how much time do we have? No, first of all, it's ridiculous to say he doesn't agree with it. The reason why they chanted send her back, which to me wasn't raucous or boisterous, it was frightening. It was because of his, in the words of Will Hurd, Republican congressman, of his racist and xenophobe remarks the last few days about the squad. Also, he said that when asked uh, about the chant, he said, oh, I, I tried to stop, but I sped up. If you look at the video, which I don't know if Ken has, which I did, he not only doesn't speed up, he steps from the podium, gives it a good 30 seconds, and lets the chant go, much as in the Hillary rallies where they said lock her up. All right, I can see Ken is ready to pounce because there are a lot of issues to take aim at. Uh, firstly, but let's, let's start with the Ken. Do you think that the president's comments about the Congresswomen were, were racist in the first place, or were they legitimate criticisms of, of their policies and statements? I think that these people <clears throat> are the racists. I mean, you have Omar herself akinning uh, boycotts of Israel with boycotts of Nazi Germany and apartheid in South Africa. I mean, that is a complete disgrace and disgusting. I'm happy that the audience was saying, send her back. And it's not, this isn't meant literally, like pick her up and deport her. It just means go back okay. where you came from if you don't like but it. He meant it literally. Does it dilute the president's <laughs> message, Ken? Because the president has a lot of valid points on the policies that these congresswomen represent. Does it dilute the strength of that message when he doesn't do more, as some, like Scott would say, to intervene when a crowd is chanting statements that many find offensive. I think it reinforces his policies and his positions because it's letting America know that he's got the guts to hit hard back to people not only who attack him, but who attack the moral values and standards Ken, of all the people who how, voted for him and most Americans. How can you speak about morality, Americans. Ken? What he said is the equivalent of using the N-word. It wasn't raucous. No, it no, wasn't tough. Not. No, please, I, I don't know where you grew up, it's Ken. It's not even remotely If I knew that. somebody when I grew up in Brooklyn who said, hey, you, N-word, go back to Africa. That is the yeah, worst. He he yeah, oh, come on. He said, go back where you came from. Back where he came from. Oh. Oh. So he could have meant for AOC to go back to the Bronx. No, and, no. If he meant to go back, and, and if he meant to go back to Somalia, so what? He'd say the same thing from somebody from the Netherlands, so can, from somebody from uh, Portugal, no, no. from somebody from he, Brazil. He only, There's nothing racist about it. He chose it's four people, women of color. No, it's people that make these kinds of comments okay. that All stir right. the right. racial Can I just not really I would like to say, yes. Okay, go ahead. I would just say, I also disagree with some of Ms. Omar's comments. I disagree with some celeb. I am not in favor of, of BDS, but I would think as a president of the United States should address, as you said, so why, break it down the issues. This was despicable, this and then? everyone says it's racist, Michelle. All right, so it was racist. Everyone? So, I'm yes. sitting here saying it's not racist. So well, most people yeah. I talk to say okay, it's not racist. So you're on record as saying All you right, didn't think it was Scott, racist. I, I hear your point, I but okay. why aren't you angrier then at Representative Omar? Where is that passion? Where is well, that rage coming from the Democratic Party? Because what she said, many would say, is far, far worse than the president Absolutely. not stopping a crowd from chanting or even no. the president saying, go back to your home countries. But, and I'm not necessarily defending that, but some of her comments have been seen by many yes. as as far worse. Well, I don't think they're far. Look, I have said, and sadly, no Republicans have the courage except for four to be say, no, this Where's is the despicable. Democratic courage? Where's the Democratic courage? I have heard many. Her there was a resolution step. condemning her remarks. They couldn't pass a resolution. They no, they did. They did she pass never named her. They First of all, her. I, you cannot equate this. There not was no, equate it. It's far worse. Uh, Jeff, if say, you, can, say, if you yell, it's not going to be smarter. My point is this. But what's intelligent? No, let me just finish. No, no, There's no never, justification. No, no, no. You've had your points. No, you haven't. You've just stopped it. It's Ken. intelligent to say All right, Ken, that Ken, somebody, you're supporting that somebody racism, who says, so I don't really no, need to hear what you're you're supporting say. racism. No. This woman is a racist. Okay, she is she's not. Asking, she's asking okay. to boycott Israel okay, is for the racist? same reasons to okay. boycott Israel. I know Nazi a little bit more about it than right. you, That is disgusting and a slap I've in the face Thank to you. all Jewish people, okay. not I'm only Jewish. in Israel, I'm Jewish. but across the entire United States. Can I just say one thing in a calm way? I said that I disagree with these things, but the point is that the president should treat this. When you say you hate America, you hate Israel, and the people, the goons in the audience, not all of them, 
who responded that way. It's scary. It's not American. And that is anti-American values. We can have a civilized discussion about... You're not more about, scared about some of the policies coming no, out from the likes of... No, not at all. No, this is a threat to our democracy. This is left and lunacy. let me just say, yes, first of all, it is as I left said... left lunacy. All right. Left lunacy. My point right, is, I, is something... I'm the, at least I can take her comments right. and break them all down. Right. You that blindly is... support someone who is a racist. I'm, I'm, I'm accurate in saying that all President right. Trump Let's see equally, how this all factors equally into the punches back no matter about race. Let's back. change topics. Yes. It's all linked, of course, but let's focus on how things are looking uh, for the 2020 presidential elections. It's still half a year away, but in the months since early this year, at least one poll has found that the president's re-election chances are gaining ground now. In February, ScottRossmusen.com survey of voters nationwide found that 46% of those polled thought it likely that the president would win a second term. Now, 60% believe it's likely that the president is re-elected. Big spike coming from Democrats. Scott, you can't say that you don't see a link between the tension that we're seeing in the Democratic Party and their support of the squad, or at least their lack of condemnation, and the president's potential well, gaining. Well, that poll, ground. by the way, Scott Rasmussen is one of the least credible polls. It's a very far right poll. But aside from that, and it's the president's He's favorite. He's had a pretty strong record of. Well, that's accuracy. fine. Well, the Rasmussen reports was off in the midterm elections. They said the Republicans would win by one percent. They lost by eight point six. But aside from that. The poll well, said I, I think the poll said 60% think he might win. There's some right. depressed I, Democrats who might say, yes. I think you're thinking of Rasmussen report well, which may not, not have with it now, yes. which may not have the strongest accuracy record but, but he also uh, is a conservative pundit. But does, anyway, aside from that But, but, but the, uh, the, the, the pattern that we're seeing, don't think this is damaging. 32% said it's it's very likely he would win. That's the number Can I, I looked at. So ahead, it's only 32% okay. said How how about this? People in America very calmly are enthralled with President Trump's authenticity, his accomplishments. The stock market is at the best it's ever been. Unemployment's at the lowest it's been in 50 years. Conservatives on the Supreme Court. He's sending back illegal immigrants who courts have adjudicated are here illegally. And he's stopping people from coming into the United States and tapping our resources. People like Trump and the Democrats, by their new face of the party, well, their socialist agenda, their redistribution of wealth schemes, and their racist commentary is turning away not only independents, but also Democrats. But, I mean, that's right. why his numbers right. are so I want to get your thoughts yes. on yes. this next topic. You yes. may agree on this one. Okay. So let's, nice. uh, That'd let's be relaxing. Uh, it's about the support coming from Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey. He certainly knows what he likes, and he puts his money where his likes are. The man who has been charged by conservatives as arbitrarily banning them from a social media platform makes it very clear that he is in favor of Representative Tulsi Gabbard as his presidential candidate of choice. A federal election commission filing shows that after the first debate, Dorsey gave the maximum contribution he could to the congresswoman, $5,600. Okay, the, the big picture here, Scott, is not, with, is not whether you support her or not, is whether it's problematic that someone like Jack Dorsey, who has so much influence and control, should be able to show his support for a candidate and does that not concern you that he may then perhaps alter his platform in support of her? I don't think so. He's, you know, he just is giving his own personal opinion, and I don't give that much weight uh, to Twitter. Well, I will say, though, that it's very important you whether You don't give weight to Twitter as a, as a I don't tool of influence? No, and I don't think he's going to mean... deliberately uh, disrupt the algorithm to help Tulsi Gabbard. I'm not that paranoid or conspiracy-minded, so I don't think that's the case. He may like her, and that's great. But my, I would like to get back to one thing, and this maybe Ken would agree with, too, is that I think President Trump's hateful words will not, and you gave that poll, will not help him. That's why his aide said, pull back. On, on, on what he said last night in North Carolina. So I, and what he did do is united Democratic Party that yes, some Democrats were uh, at odds with the squad. Now they're united. So in fact, he better change his campaign if he, he All right, you to wanna win. make it back about the president, but Ken, I wanna get your thoughts about Jack Dorsey because a lot of conservatives have been saying that Twitter is banning them. There's been a number of shadow bans. I mean, I've certainly tried to look up certain conservatives and they, the search doesn't auto-populate. This has been a big issue. So now when you have a man that has so much influence, making it very clear who he supports, just from a Democratic perspective, forget the national elections for now. Isn't it problematic? I mean, are you not concerned that there may be some kind of tweaking of Twitter? I have a twofold response on this. Uh, just like major, uh, major monopolies that have been broken up in the past, these major monopolies in social media like Twitter and Facebook, they are eventually going to need to be broken up because there is too much influence that is going down in one direction, and it's actually inhibiting speech almost on like a governmental level. That said, the exact opposite approach, 
he does have the right to support who he wants. I, myself, I am a little bit afraid from a conspiracy theory uh, kind of perspective that he will uh, taint things in favor of Democrats in general. If he likes, if he likes her, fine. That's that's good for him. He can he can throw out there whoever he likes. What but, happened in 2016 was when an actual thing, the Russians actually the, used Facebook fir- to elect Donald Trump. Well, we actually no, the don't Russians know, didn't elect Donald Trump. We they don't helped. know People that did. those. They didn't help. Uh, Nobody was fooled by them. We don't know that that had actual a meaningful impact on the election. But I thought this would be something you'd agree on. You don't think that there should be something done to dilute the power of these social media giants? I don't think that's a, a, a pressing concern. I think you could argue then, what about media giants who influence people much a more? A lot of Democrats uh, I don't. I'm not big that. for breaking things up. I think I, would, I believe in personal responsibility and people should get the truth, hopefully, from the news and from social so media and they should make so, their own opinion. Right. So you don't right, want right, campaign right, right. contribution caps then under that? Very quick call. question. Oh, Have any of you done that app that shows you what you look like when you age? <laughs> no, it's probably I how I look when I get off, take my makeup off. I <laughs> no, think. and I won't be doing All it. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Scott and Ken. Thank you, Michelle. Uh,